Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop. The Four Horsemen build for August 2021 is a 70s street machine Roger Dodger. Um, I happen to have the ID version, which is uh, it was my theme this month, so I sent out to the other three guys um, this particular casting. I love this this particular casting for a lot of reasons, uh, mainly from childhood. Plastic base, see-through, really cool car. Um, one of my favorites of all time. Huge shout out to Diecast Outcast, who is now our fourth horseman, and he has taken the place of Jeff, who has some other things in life going on, and gracefully um, opened up a spot so somebody else could join. And we unanimously voted for Brian over at Diecast Outcast. So make sure you check him out. The link will be in the description below. If you want to participate in our builds, the upcoming September and October castings are right here in the themes. Make, feel free to join. We appreciate anybody who does. And if you do, make sure you email your finished pictures to fourhorsemandiecast at gmail.com so we can make sure that we get you guys showcased on the Four Horsemen Diecast channel. So obviously step one is to take these things apart. I drilled it out, plastic base, real simple. Um, nothing special about the ID car except for the fact that it's got a you know, see-through base for obvious reasons. Um, but overall, pretty simple. Plastic interior, uh, plastic base, plastic wheels. Very, very easy to work with. So I'm going with the torque thrust style or Krager style. Uh, to me, I call them torque thrusts. Um, I want to be a little obscene on this and go with some really large rear tires and i think the fronts are about the same size as what came on it originally but in order to do so they hit the wheel wells so i've got two choices i can either radius out the wheel wells or i can drop them down a little bit i opted to drop them down because i like the way the wheel wells are in the car to begin with so step one is i'm going to you don't have to do this but i'm grinding down the little uh, wheel stops that are on the bottom of all these bases um, taking that off first so I kind of have an idea of what I'm working with and the wheels are much wider than what was on it originally which is intentional uh, 70 street machine I envision something jacked up with wide ass tires in the back deep dish craggers you know wild paint that kind of thing that was my interpretation anyways so in order to do that and get these wheels to clear I've also got to cut in and I've got to narrow the chassis in the rear to be able to handle the width of the tire so a they're not sticking out obscenely far from the wheel wells but also at the same time um, you know allows them to um, I can control how far out they do stick and it gives me a little bit more to work with as far as making sure that I can get the axle sitting lower on the chassis that I want which will in turn create a little bit of a gap between the top of the wheel and the bottom of the fender well. So I do this with, you can do it with a file, you can do it with cutters. I happen to use a Dremel with a cutoff disc, just works for me. I kind of grind it. And right now I'm not trying to make it look pretty. I'm just trying to get to the right width that I need on the chassis in the rear. And once I find that, you know, I'm just taking a little bit at a time because um, I don't want to go too far. Um, once I get it to where I want, then I use a file and sandpaper and try to make it as smooth as I can and straight and level. Because you're not going to get 100% perfect with the cutoff disc. It just makes shorter work of what it is you're trying to do. Um, and it's not for everybody, so you don't have to follow my, my guideline here. Um, I just, I'm handy with, with the Dremel tool. I haven't lost a digit yet, so until I do, I'm going to continue to use it. Highly recommend wearing safety glasses. That's my safety tip of the day um, only because you don't want to get plastic in your eye or you know that kind of stuff but anyways now that I've got it to the right width or what I think is the right width I'm gonna cut down so I'm just deepening the channel that the original axle sat in just to get it um, as low as I can without cutting obviously through the base and 
that allows me the flexibility to create that gap that I'm looking for um, at the wheel wells. So and most of this requires a ton of fitting, you know, back and forth. Um, this works the way I want, but the chassis, um, the interior needs to be cut and trimmed a little bit, which is fairly common when you're doing modifications with wheels and using, you know, either a, a larger size diameter wheel, or if you're trying to chop, not chop, but if you're trying to drop a vehicle and slam it on the ground, um, a lot of times those wheels have to sit up inside the body and you'll find you have to cut the interiors a lot to get the clearance that you're looking for so it doesn't rub. So in this case, it was just the clearance issue. Um, so I painted the, the, the base flat black. I detailed the motor. Um, I painted it tester's chrome, actually, and then I did some detail painting on it just to get a rough idea because now it's starting to come together in my head what I want. Um, the the actual chassis itself has got some great detail on it. Um, underneath doesn't, but the grill and front and rear bumper assemblies uh, look pretty decent. So after painting it black, I'm going to go and do the fog lights underneath, or the driving lights, I guess you could say. Um, I just took some liberties here with colors. Um, they could have been orange, um, just going yellow, uh, mainly because I think it pops a little bit more. And a lot of times my color choices depend on what I think is going to pop. Um, it's definitely not taste because I haven't, I don't have any. Um, so I just go with what I think. The front headlights, there's two on each side. So I'm just going to dab those with a little bit of white on the end of my fine brush. And then on the back, I'm going to end up painting the taillights red. And I'm going to do the bumper, both front and rear, and the Maltov chrome with my big pen there. And, you know, everybody's got their own choices and how you do things and i'm i see it a lot on the maybe it's the facebook pages um you know i see people post pictures of their customs and I, then i see other people making fun of them or ragging on them about something it's like you know what everybody does this and everybody's at a different skill level as far as i'm concerned my stuff still sucks and i'll never be i'm probably my own worst critic but I would never, ever put anybody down. And if you are one of those people, shame on you. You know, um, everybody has different abilities. Um, a lot of people that I know have learning disabilities that do this. And th this actually helps them. And then to turn around and make fun of somebody, it's just, it's just petty. So um, I digress. Anyways, I stripped the casting. It's got, I, I wasn't going to go this route. But after stripping it, the body looked so good and clean. Um, I decided to polish it. So I'll, as you saw, I'm using my Flitz polish. I just kind of dab a little bit on there, and then I'll take my, my buffing wheel. I'm not really putting a ton of pressure on it. I'm just kind of working it in. I work it in at like maybe uh, speed two on my Dremel, maybe three. Then as I work it in more, I start to speed it up just a little bit, and I speed up my hand motion. Uh, there's 8,000 ways to do this. You can wet sand it and wet sand it with different grits all the way up to, you know, 5,000 if you want to get a perfect, perfect casting. Um, I don't get that kind of time. So I'm polishing it with the flitz. It's good enough for me. I'm happy. Gets the point across. Um, so, you know, I usually do this three, maybe four times. You can see I'm kind of cleaning off the, uh, the, uh, the actual attachment there. So, you know, I'll do it three or four times, wipe it down in between each one. And then when I think I've got as good as it's going to get, that's where I stop. And then I'll wipe it down with mineral spirits just to get all the residue off. Because even though you wipe it, there's still some. And when you paint it, you don't want the paint to, to fall off, especially in like the door cracks, the door jams and all that kind of stuff. Really get in there because that'll the paint will separate if it gets into the um, that area and there's dirt or grime in there. So you can see here, I'm, I'm hitting it again on the top. It's just one of those things. It's, a, it's actually, to me, it's enjoyable um, to see, you know, the, the transformation from the casting to the polished look. And this was fairly polished, to be honest with you, you know, after it was stripped. But uh, it's just a good feeling to see it. You see it take place in the transformation and the actual casting itself. So, um, you know, I don't do this with all the castings, but if you're a red line guy and you do a lot of red lines, the old vintage stuff, you know, you're going to have to get good at it because everything's Spectre Flame. And you have to have a nice polished casting to work with. So it's good good to give it a try. 
So I want to do something a little bit different. I'm just gonna, not going to just paint it a solid color. This is a 70s thing. So I put a wide stripe on the top all the way down, and then I've got a thin one on the sides. I'm going to use some of my Bright Vision paint, uh, magenta, and I'm going to follow it up with some lavender. And so after step one, I've got the polished underneath the tape that I peeled off. And then I get the magenta. So after that, I'm going to mask that off on the, in the, on the top with a thin piece of tape. And it's going to give me this. So I've got just that one strip of the actual casting underneath. And then I'm going to clear coat the whole thing. You can see it's kind of light on the side. So it's got some variations in the paint, which is what I was after when it came to um, this 70s theme. And I also actually threw some clear coat on the engine and interior as well, just to make it kind of pop and stand out a little bit. If you like the content, make sure you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. Not sure if you guys are aware, but I do have an Outlaw Custom Club YouTube membership uh, with special benefits. Uh, some members only content like website discounts to customs that I have to sale, behind the scenes videos, progress pictures and content, so on and so forth. Make sure you check it out. As you recall, this is what I started with uh, 10 minutes ago in video time. Uh, really cool ID car from Hot Wheels, the Roger Dodger. It's a vintage uh, classic design, uh, one of their mainstays that they've had forever. Um, this is what it turned out to be. You can see the variation slightly in the paint between the lavender and the magenta. Um, I think it really came out excellent. Um, one of my one of my more favorite builds that I've done, just because it was fun to do, and the Spectra Flame paint's always enjoyable to spray. Um, never have an issue, and the only issue I usually have is when I'm masking stuff off. But I didn't have to prime anything. I didn't have to worry about that. So this came out really good. So it's got three technical variations of um, the casting which is really cool um, but overall i hope you guys enjoy it i got a few pictures coming up please make sure you check out all the four horsemen builds and anybody else who's participating uh, should be some great great variations of this i can't wait to see them all myself thank you for watching and i will catch you on the next one